Okay, Brother Wood Turners. Um, this is a this is a demonstration uh, made to show you the steps in turning um, an animal like this. This is called a femi sphere. And as I mentioned in the handout, yes, it does actually. Uh, as I will explain. This is a member of a class of solids called spherocons. And a spherocon is defined by two identical cones, you know, a cone like an ice cream cone, which are joined at the base of the cone after twisting. Okay? They're actually defined the way you would turn this. Now, you could imagine a femi sphere which had very straight sides. But these sides aren't straight at all. They have a more feminine contour. Yes. And that's the, uh, the origin of the name femisphere, or at least so the web says. Now, um, there is actually a discussion of this whole class of, of solids uh, in Scientific American. And I gave, you, uh, I gave you the reference there if you want to chase it down. Um, and I am not the first person to turn a femisphere by a long shot. It's even been featured at some of the at some of the of the conferences. And indeed, I found on the line a really detailed, really good handout by Don Geiger. And it's at the URL which I also reference here. Um, Don Geiger calls this shape the odd wobbler, and if you've so, seen the ones I brought in before. When you roll this thing, it wobbles from side to side, but it has a good long course in that regard. It's kind of like a top. It's so balanced. Um, now, I'm going to follow Geiger's demonstra uh, demonstration suggestions pretty basically, but there are some things that are more important than others, and Geiger's handout doesn't emphasize which, which ideas, which steps are more important but I will, and we'll come back and summarize the important points at the end of the demo. So there are, um, I've got five different, um, five different shapes to show you which represent five different stages. This is the fifth. Here is the first. What's really important is that you have certain dimensions correctly, that you plane the right that you plane the right surface and that you connect the two shapes correctly. Um, we're following Geiger's recommendation to have width twice height. Okay? Width twice height. We then take the surfaces that are going to be joined and we run them through the planer. Okay? And then we apply hot glue in an H pattern. So more at the ends, a strip at the ends, and then right down the middle. You could also put another strip down the middle so that you would have three verticals and one horizontal. Okay? Later on, you're going to remove that glue with denatured alcohol. And I'm not sure that's widely known. When I did it in oak, the denatured alcohol cut right through it, no problem. When I did it in walnut with the grain tighter, it took, uh, it took a while. I actually took a syringe and was forcing the, the denatured alcohol into the joint, but it did come right away, and the denatured alcohol allowed me to clean the surfaces. But we'll get there. Mike, did Geiger mention about putting paper in between? He doesn't no, do that? no paper, no paper. Um, he, he discusses some al other alternatives, but strongly recommends this one. One last thing. When you have the two blocks, and before you glue them together, it's imperative that you cut little V's in the center. Um, I use a, just a file, a triangular or pyram pyramidical file like this, and then just mark the center and draw it. Now, there's a reason for that. We don't want to force a point into the center and break the glue joint, right? We want all the compression to be on the sides. And notice that, the, uh, that I took the cone 
off the live, uh, the, the live uh, end, right? Yeah. So that I'd be pressing together and not splitting apart. And the, the V's help make sure that that happens. And that's just in the very end of the wood. That's in the, once you've cut these blocks, you mark the center, draw the V's, then you can glue, right? And of course, Number three in my demo is what happens after you make a cylinder out of this uh, rectangular parallel of piping. Uh, and nobody needs any help with that, so here's the cylinder. Right. Okay, this is where the interesting stuff starts. And despite the fact that if you've set up the dimensions properly, you're going to be able to predict the size of the, of the femisphere, you, you don't rely on that at all. Once you've got a cylinder, all the flat spots are gone, you go ahead and you, me you measure its diameter, and you transfer the diameter to the center of the, of the cylinder. So I'm going to do that with my points here. Okay, I like just about there. Okay. <coughs> Mike, you can eye that up. That's okay. You don't have to yeah, this is all selvage here. Okay. What, what's happening over here is you are, all, the femisphere is contained within these two markings. And just to make it a little easier, we could even, uh, we could even make sure that we got a um, dark there. <laughs> Everything here is going to be turned away, and it's just going to be waste. The femisphere will be completely within here. Now the next step is to um, find the midpoint. And as I've done it, I'm, um, I'm th 3 and 7 eighths. So that means I want to be 1 and 13 sixteenths. I mean uh, 15 sixteenths, right? Yep. So... Is that one and fifteen sixteenths? Yeah, I'm just gonna come over a hair. That middle point's important also because if it's not in the middle, you're not gonna get a you're not gonna get a uh, a symmetric shape. I'm going to actually, on the grounds that I should be very careful about this step, I'm going to double check, double check triple check dividers. it. Pardon? Yeah, the dividers. I think I just made dividers, yeah. Okay. Okay, I want to come over just to here. So there is my center. And once more, I am going to mark that. Okay, we got to make two more pencil marks here. Notice that you can, your eye will complete the shape out to an edge, right? And that edge will have a width, and we're going to mark that width now. Um, this is an important point that I'll emphasize again at the end. In some ways, a very small edge, this one's fairly small, is elegant, but it's also risky. It's risky because this width will end up being the spindle width at the end. And the thinner you get the spindle width, the more likely the whole thing will shear off, right? Exactly. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this one a little bit thicker. I'm gonna make this one a full 3 sixteenths on each side. One, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. Yeah. So once more, I'm going to mark these. And this one. And pardon? So your edges are going to be 3 eighths of an inch. That's right. Okay, good. <coughs> So, we now come to the next step, and that is to measure the distance 
between the inside right edge of the center and the outside right edge. And we measure that, I'm going to measure it with the compass, because we're going to need a help. We're going to need a quarter sphere. I've got it exactly. And we're going to take a piece of paper that has a grid on it, a 3 by 5 uh, a line 3 by 5 card with a perpendicular works perfectly well. We're going to just come over here to the origin and we're going to draw that quarter sphere. Now what we're going to do is cut that sucker out, but I'm not going to have you watch me cut it out because I got one. It's pretty darn close. I will cut this out eventually, but you see that I have one that's close enough so that I can demo how it's used. I won't get that far down in here um, before I actually need to have this exact one. But it's a good idea to just plan every single time to draw a new temple. And it's a quarter circle. Okay, so now we're ready to actually do some turning. And um, at this point, this project is a right to be called Two Coves, a Bead, and a Twist. Because that's exactly what it is. Two coves, a bead, and a twist. A cove here, a cove here, a bead on the top, and then you're going to take them apart. So, I'm not going to do much of this because the turning part isn't, uh, isn't all that challenging, but the first thing you do, you back off from... Notice I haven't gone very far. In fact, if I were going to go product, if I were going to go production on this, I'd go back. I'd go another half inch in because I got plenty of width there to hold it. Um, you don't. So you're talking to, about the tenon then? I'm talking about this tenon. Yes. This tenon is thicker than it needs to be, but what you need to remember at this point is you don't take the tenon down to its final diameter immediately. You take it down in steps. You shrink the tenon turn. Shrink the tenon, turn the cove. Shrink the tenon, turn the cove. It's important to keep your shrinking the tenon ahead of turning the cove because you don't want to lose sight of where that line is, otherwise you don't get the symmetry you want, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? So it's your, it's your guide. It's your guide. But for a couple of passes here in the cove, this will do nicely. So of course you're going to go in vertically In the beginning, you're not going to have the shape perfect because you don't have as much surface to work on, but you're going to get there. Step up and just step up and take a look at, at the shape that I've got. If you, question, if you do take this down to your final dimension, whatever that is, you still have this wall as your guide, wouldn't you? Yeah, but what you'd have is um, you'd have a, a very relatively thin spindle. Yeah. And so Geiger recommends, and I follow that recommendation, 
that you go ahead and just do it in stages, so you always have quite a bit of wood here. Are you worried about breakage of the small tenon? Your work, yeah, and it's ha actually in the uh, in preparation for this demo, okay. that broke before I was ready. Ah. Therefore, I had to saw it off, and I had to jam chuck it to finish it. Okay. And it was because I think the, of the thinness that I chose there. Okay. Okay. So, so the idea is now this is actually quite a bit of fun. You're going to go a little further than I am now, but then you're going to start, and you can see right off the bat that I know that I'm not on my, I'm not on my template. So I'm going to correct, Look, right? Can you roll it over so you can see it? Show it there, we can see it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, well, yeah, I can do it anyway. So you see, I'm too deep for my width, and I'll correct that. I mean, you, the shape looks fine, but it ain't a quarter circle, and that's happened to me every single time. So I... I never would make one of these without the template to hand. And I, I'll check every couple of passes uh, so that I don't have to make uh, very, very high stakes corrections toward the end of the thing. Okay? So I guess in this case, you know, I'm going to come in a little bit and go a little less shallow and, and you get the drill. Okay. So let's suppose I've done a bunch of that. And I now have got down my... Um, right side of my femisphere to the point where I um, am all the way down to the, to the ending depth. That is to where this diameter, and what do I mean by this? Let me point it out with a pencil. The diameter taken at this point is exactly equal to this width, the width of the blade, if you like, the rolling blade, the thing that will be the bead. Say that again. Okay, let's suppose I've gone all the way down to, so to the point where this width is exactly equal to the distance from here to here. If this is A, B, C, D, E, then the di diameter of A is equal to the length B, D. Right? At that point, I'm done with the right and I move to the left. And I, it's exactly symmetric. After I'm done with both sides, I turn the bead. And I have another demo piece prepared to show you. When I'm completely done, it looks like this. So now you can, now you can see the risks associated with choosing a blade width that's very, very thin. This is already pretty thin, and if I want the selvage to be a little bit thinner so I know exactly where to cut it and where to sand to, um, I, I have the risk that it will twist right off. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Voila. Perfect. And, you know, is it hard? It's like you planted. No, no, it's not hard. Practice. It's just, you know, you just make small, small strokes and frequent corrections and you get there. No problem. This is not a, this is not a high stakes, um, this is not a high stakes project. If you make a lot of them, you get a scraper. <laughs> you get a scraper, yeah. Right, but then you're going to see them for a long time. So anyway, come back now. Um, remember, you are, before you're done, you're going to put you the back of your chisel right at the center and you're going to roll it to get that bead. You can get away with a little bit sanding, but uh, you know, you don't want to sand all that down. So you're going to cut a bead. Now, what do you do when you get to this point? Well, it's still mounted, right? What you're going to do is you're going to saw one of them off. Um, probably what you're going to do is take your Chinese draw saw and score them on both sides. Take the thing off, finish cut it. And then what do you get? You get, you get this. So how do you separate? Well, I'm going to I'm going to explain that Our right rulers. now. <laughs> so this is this is a un unsanded femisphere, which is not a femisphere yet. It's a conic. It's a symmetric conic section, right? Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> well, the mark, the hallmark of the femisphere is the asymmetric, asymmetry. So what we do at this point, this is still glued together in your mind's eye, right? 
is that we soak it with denatured alcohol, <coughs> which dissolves hot glue. You, you, you don't want to, you don't want to, uh, hot glue is pretty strong. You don't want to pry them apart mm. lest you break, you know, chip right along the seam and mm. then you're going to get an ugly thing. So you go ahead and, and put some denatured alcohol <coughs> in a little pie plate, you know, a, 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 a mini plot pie plate, and you soak it in there. And I've got uh, some syringes. And I just load the, load the syringe and squirt it into the, into the edges. And I just let it sit there then. And I'll come back to it in a few hours. It took me about a day to break this one apart. And I was scared because the oak had taken me about 15 minutes to break apart. But it breaks apart. And then you just keep reapplying the denatured alcohol to the revealed spheres. And you can see these are as clean as you could hope for, right? These are perfectly clean. There is no more remnant of glue there. You couldn't just weight it down in a bucket of alcohol? And yeah, but that's expensive, cool. right? Denatured's not cheap. So I, I, uh, I went for the let's not waste the denatured alcohol solution. I wasn't in a hurry. I started this a while ago. Okay, where does the femisphere come from? Well, remember... Excuse me, Mike. Yes. You said you put it in a little pie plate. Where does it, it actually... How do you get it into denatured alcohol? Well, I, I fill, I've only put about a quarter inch of denatured alcohol in the pie plate. I've set this in, in there. I've loaded my syringe. I've squirted it. Okay, that's what you really do. You squirt it. And I squirted it, and I squirted it. And then I've come back and tested it and done it again. And finally, I, I, get, I get it that it's loose. And then I go ahead and pry. Then, when they're apart, I set the faces in the denatured alcohol. Okay. And I come back and I scrape gently because I don't want to chip the margins. And, and it comes off. It's come off every time. It's come off oak. It's come off walnut. Okay. So remember that we, we said that a femisphere is actually, um, an act, it's actually two cones with a twist. Well, you, your eye can see a cone, right? There's a cone, ice cream cone. It's just got an indented side to it instead of a straight side. Here's the other cone. Here's how we make the sem a femisphere. That's it, man. Turn. There is a... Turn it 90 degrees. Can you show it to Earl? So, Earl and everyone out there in He's video in land, TV <laughs> land yeah. here are the two cones opposite one another. Put it by your shirt there, I think. Maybe. Here there are the two cones there. opposite one another. We are going to twist them and reconnect them at the base like this. And what you do at this point is you line them up as well as you can and you glue them permanently with tight bond. Okay? And how do you uh, you put pressure on it? How do you hold it? I hold it in a in a proper clamp edge to edge because the symmetry is is so good that it, that I can actually hold it. Every single time I've been able to hold it by pressing the clamp from here to here. Okay. And I leave it a, you know, I leave it the full day because I want it to be strong. Now, the first time you make one of these, if you ever do, you're going to see that your margins are not perfect. You're going to see that despite the fact that you could hold up that quarter circle, you're going to see that the edges do not align perfectly. It's just the way things are. So how do you fix that? Two steps. One, you go over to the disc sander and you just knock these, these long things down. Be gentle, don't go too far, <coughs> because you don't want to ruin this surface or this surface or their counterparts. Just knock the big stuff off. Then you take a Dremel and a, sand, and a sanding drum on the Dremel and you gradually shape it. And this one's pretty good. I've made ones that don't conform as well, but at the end of the day, you take a look at that and you will see that the margins are really pretty clean. And the demo, Dremel is a beautiful shaping tool. You know, you don't want to just take it down right there. You want to back off a little bit and contour. But honestly, it's not a big burden. It's not like you have hours to do when you get to that point. You only have a few minutes. I did a quick search on Google. IPA is a great solvent for hot glue, especially with wood. 
IPA. Isopropyl alcohol. Yeah, well, that's, that's what denatured alcohol. They, denatured alcohol is a cousin. I thought that was that. Geiger recommends denatured, but isopropyl. No, denatured alcohol is not the same thing as isopropyl alcohol. No, but they have a lot of the same okay. molecules. Yeah, same properties. Thank you, Don. Okay, so um, again, let me finish where we started. This is the finished product. I have made here a tiny little <coughs> base. I've drilled a hole here so that it would mount. Uh, if the hole is small enough, it still rolls very, very nicely. It's still an odd wobbler. Um, Can we I see think. Wobble? Sure. Uh, well. Do? Um, Just over there. Yeah. Can okay. Well, let's walk over, over here, Earl, and we can see it wobble. A wibbly. Oh, you can wobble it right here. I need more surface. Okay. Ready? <laughs> That's odd. Wow, well, it keeps going. And it wobbles. Like a <laughs> Do it again, Mike. That's right. <laughs> Boy, it doesn't take much. Drunken sailor. I've seen Don walk like that. <laughs> 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 That's what most of my bowls look like. <laughs> okay, if we come back here, I got one minute, one minute, and we'll be done.